Well, it's good Sunday morning from Panama City. We're here eating, you can see breakfast, 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 breakfast all over the place. Yes. Well, good morning from Panama City, Panama. What a beautiful day, you know, the cloud and sky. Everybody's out bustling out, you know, inside of the mountains. Like I said, welcome to Panama City. Going by. Hey, Mink is cool. A lot of traffic. We're in Old Panama City. Old Panama City. Mar Azul Restaurant. Oh, the whole bread here is empty. Was so delicious. Honey, how about the ceviche? Food. I'm hungry. How about the ceviche? I'm a piggy. It was good? Ceviche was delicious. Okay. This is the best night. It's full. 
this restaurant they open 24 hours a day. Look at that. Costa Azul. Costa Azul, Panama. The ceviche is delicious. If you want to check out the menu, what we can do is scan that. Or you sit in and see there's a second. And there is somebody with the egg. Very cool. Nice. 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 Yep. Huh? You just don't wreck it. Because it's college. <laughs> When there is the happy birthday, the baby. Do you order? What do you order? Dessert? Yes, lemon pie. Huh? Lemon meringue pie. Which? It's and nice. Cafe con leche. Cafe con leche. This is good stuff. Wow, I love this restaurant. Do you taste your pie? How, mm. how, this, how, how this pie it is good? It's delicious. Delicious. It's not my sister's cherry pie, but this is good cherry. This is good pie. Cheers, honey. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That is so good. Uh, it just it is the crust. Everything is perfect. Good. Come on nice. down and grab a piece. Huh? Come on, come on down and grab a piece. Come to Panama? <laughs> Panama City. Okay. Panama. Ed. When do you let you? Cheers. Do you want your coffee? No. When do you let you? In Spanish? Bon appetit. Mm. Dile. Don't get it. The color, okay, yeah. Those are going to rain, no? Three hundred meters, stay low. Go toward Calle Aquilino de la Guardia. Turn right onto Calle Aquilino de la Guardia, then turn left onto Calle 50.
the detail work on the front of that building. Wow. Something else. We're not going to ask your ID, honey. We are at the Panama Canal, Mia Flores. Canal de Panama. One of the seven wonders of the world. Let's go check it out. Ooh, let's see what we're going to find here. You never know what's on, on, the, other, on the other side of the... Ooh, coffee cup. What's that? How you doing? IMAX theaters up here. IMAX. This way. We'll go to IMAX first. Yeah. And when we get done with the IMAX, then we'll have plenty of time to go see the rest of it. Okay, there. The next ship is going to show up about 1 o'clock. 12.30, 1 o'clock. So we'll, we've got plenty of time to go to the movie theater and grab a hot dog and all that stuff before all that starts. So let's go get it done. Sea of Green, the largest Western Hemisphere rainforest outside the Amazon. Vegetation blankets even the volcanic mountains. Sustained by water, life flourishes. surveyors sent out by the king of Spain to find a canal route across what is now Panama. They didn't find it. What they found was nearly impenetrable jungle. First surveyors concluded there was no way to build such a canal and nearly 500 years ago there wasn't but the idea lived on what once seemed impossible is today a wonder of the world, a human triumph, and one of the great stories of all time.
an ocean giant, longer than three football fields, packed with thousands of truck-sized containers, steered from a bridge 12 stories high. Like dozens of other ships, it's about to enter the Panama Canal. Heeds command to the specialist who knows every inch of the round ahead. question is, why go to the trouble of cutting a pathway for ships through 50 miles of forest and mountains? Previously, ships risked a long and dangerous voyage around South America. Shipwrecks littered the seafloor. The only alternative was to ship cargo to Panama, the narrowest part of Central America, and carry it overland to a vessel on the other side. The trek was grueling and slow, whether hauling the gold of the conquistadors or mail for California 300 years later. But it made Panama a crossroads of the world. California gold rush brought a flood of miners headed west. It has carried people across the isthmus for more than 150 years. But most of the world's commerce travels in ships, not trains. Enter a French entrepreneur named Ferdinand de Lesseps. He had created Egypt's Suez Canal. He vowed to do the same thing in Panama. De Lesseps' idea was a mammoth cut, 30 feet below sea level, all the way through the land. But Panama was not Egypt, not a dry and flat desert. Panama was crossed by a major river, the Chagres, and eight months of rain a year drenched the land. Whoa. The tropical setting was beautiful, but for workers, it was also hot, humid, and remote. Men with axes, picks, and crude steam shovels would have to dig a trench nearly a mile wide and 350 feet deep through a mountain range of solid rock. They would have to move more earth than humans had ever moved before. Worse, they would have to survive one of the world's greatest killers without even knowing it was a killer. Nine years of rain, mudslides, stubborn jungle, and disease defeated the French. As many as 20,000 died. The waters of Panama washed away their dream. President Theodore Roosevelt saw a chance to control two oceans if the U.S. built the canal. Panama was a protectorate of Colombia. When a deal with the Colombians failed, Roosevelt sent a U.S. gunship to support Panamanian patriots. The revolution took one day, November 3rd, 1903. Panama was now a sovereign country.
engineer John Stevens figured out how to use the river rather than to fight it. Instead of digging a sea level canal, he could dam the Chagres. Ships would sail across Panama on a lake. The Americans wouldn't need to dig through the entire country. Stevens would build stair steps of water on either side to raise ships to the lake. Locks had been built before, but never on such a colossal scale. They would still have to cut through the western mountains, but not as deeply as the French. Stevens recognized that his diggers needed a reliable train system to carry the dirt away. He completely overhauled the Panama Railway. The Americans had a plan now. But they could not succeed until they stopped the diseases killing workers. <laughs> the mystery was, what caused yellow fever and malaria? Most believed they came from poisonous vapors in the rainforest. But an American doctor named William C. Gorgas knew that recent research identified two kinds of mosquitoes as the disease carriers. Proving that mosquitoes in Panama caused yellow fever, malaria, and other diseases changed medicine. Dr. Gorgas's public health campaign saved thousands of lives and served as models around the world. The Americans mounted a huge eradication program. Within two years, the canal area was cleared of yellow fever. With healthier workers, the odds of success rose. and difficulties continued, but so did progress. Tourists arrived to see the great feat of engineering. It took 10 years, but with a design that turned water from enemy to ally, the canal was completed. In August of 1914, the SS Ancon made the first official passage through the canal, but the achievement went little noticed. World War I began the same day. More than a million ships have passed through since. The canal changed global shipping, cutting the trip between the Atlantic and Pacific by 8,000 miles and three weeks. It's one of the most famous places on earth. But few of us understand how the Panama Canal works. The trip starts with tugboats guiding a ship through a channel to the first lock. ever made at the time of construction. Simple and ingenious, they are based on a Leonardo da Vinci design from the 15th century. With double doors sealed shut by water pressure, Today, a computerized hydraulic system controls them. But for nearly a hundred years, the gates were opened and closed by hand for every passing ship. Cleverly, the gates were built hollow, 
It only takes a small motor to move it. The steel cables are now secured to small locomotives that maneuver the vessel by tightening or slackening the lines. It's a nerve-wracking job. Sometimes there is less than one foot between the hull and the concrete wall. Some people call locomotives mules after the animals that worked early day canals.